Greeting everyone, and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and we're looking at a pretty nice, pretty nice Germany, I'd say. Now, obviously, the Iron Heights Pact isn't perfect yet, but we're, it's a work in progress, but money for nothing. Bowman was enjoying his lunch, a fine steak prepared by his personal chef with fried onions and a peppered sauce when Kurt Long burst into the room. Long paused when a glimpse of, a glimpse of fire in his uh, leader daddy's eyes of being interrupted, but forged ahead nonetheless. My big daddy, it's a disaster. The stock market in Frankfurt, he paused for a moment to catch his breath. It's crashed. The companies, the ones purchasing Rex Vaca assets, they're nothing. Evidently, some pencil pushers picked up on one and spread the news. Now, every investment that has been made into them is gone. Bowman shrugged, cutting a piece of steak. Yes, business is a fool's game. What else? Long considered. What else? My dude. <clears throat> this is a disaster. There are riots in Frankfurt. Riots spreading across the Reich as we speak. Countless people have lost everything. Bowman felt a churning in his belly reluctantly lowered the stake. <sighs> Darn them for ruining his meal. We have to contain the riots and deploy the hair. Our GDP will take a hit. Our growth will go down. Our base stability goes down. Conservative lo loyalty goes down as well. But what else can we do about that right now? There's really nothing. Ho! Oh, man. Negative GDP growth. I don't think I've seen that in quite a while. Holy bad words. Oof. I'm going to pump those numbers up, but what do we have over here? And there's a couple comments, like I said, we have to get to, but we're doing okay with the Romania. Claiming the pact. And we do stuff down there. That's fine. Hello, chickens. The meeting of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht was suspiciously absent one member. Bowman eyed the empty chair with growing suspicion as the generals clucked like mother hens, fussing about troop deployments and sh armed shipments. Where's Schoen? He asked in a lowered voice, interrupting them. I'm afraid the failed Marshal Schoen has been out of contact for the past day, my dude. All attempts to locate him have failed. Troops under his commands are clearly or similarly not responding to communications. Bowman's stomach will ache work worsened. Things were becoming increasingly clear and he didn't like it. If you see him, make him go pew pew. The dismantle button will become available once we hit 70% control, huh? Interesting, interesting. And now, we have the free Ukraine we can do. And we must contact, contact the Volk in Muscovy. Because we can't do this one because Oberkommando Brasovichstadt has reunified Muscovy by themselves, but they haven't. Despite being predominantly Russian, Muscovy has a large German minority among natives already living there from the towns of the Tsardom, and the colonists who settled within the Reich's Commissariat as part of Lebensraum project. These men and women still hope to reunite with the Kim, and the Reich will answer. We shall send our agents to reestablish uh, communications with regions still under German control, and with resistance cells within the rebel states. They will build a network of forces ready to strike at the right moment. With that support, they'll be able to help us greatly in the reclamation of Western Russia. Very good. <clears throat> and we shall mobilize a hair, which should be good. Uh, approach Kaminsky. One of the... Actually, it does not exist. Well, if you like to let's go right ahead. Muscovy does exist, however, over here. Contact the Volk. Led by Bronislav Kaminsky. I kind of like this. All right, cool. Well, I guess we can do that anyways. One of the Russia's collaborators who were part of the Katya's administration has managed to secure a sizable portion of the Reich's commissariat, his influence with the Muscovy, and the loyalty he commands from the moderate natives willing to come to an agreement with us can help us greatly. But he's in danger of being attacked by the rebels surrounding him. Our Führer doesn't ignore this man's value and agrees that he can be extremely helpful in managing the colony after we have rec reconquered it. He has sent a letter to Kaminsky, promising help him help in exchange for his complete loyalty once the Reich's commissariat has been reunited. All we need to do is for him to agree, though to most this seems but a rhetorical question or... or Rhetoric question or rhetorical question? Cool. We got some more research. It is only 1966. Hope you're having a great year and a great day as well. We're doing this. We, got, we So we're pretty much done with our land auction. It is 1966. So let's improve our guns just a wee bit more. They're doing quite well, but just a wee bit more. Um, there, there's a lot we could do here. Oh, this is... Well, we've already won three out of five, so... It doesn't really matter. We're going to get two easy. An easy two. Mm, I don't lose guns. Manpower. Army XP, I don't want to lose Army XP either. Three to four. It doesn't matter if we lose. You know what, I'm not going to do anything yet. Let them let them figure out what, the, what that they want to do. And then we'll mobilize a hail. The table stand, we play our cards. Now the game must be proceed to the next stage with our agents in place and the collaborators ready to make their part. All we need to do is to give the signal to our main forces. Within days, our troops will reach the border with the traitor warlords and prepare to cross it. The invasion will still require some time, as such an endeavor requires adequate logistics and sufficient reserves. As soon as they are ready, we shall unleash the might of the Hale upon those foolish enough to stand against the resurgent might of the Reich. Kaminsky agrees to our terms. With the preparations of the reclamation of Muscovy in full swing, the Führer's office is a flurry of activity. Officers, spies, and diplomats coming and going to inform their leader of the advancements made. Units mobilized, produce production rates, infiltration attempts, and many more. One of the several dozen dispatches, however, stands among the others. Bronislav Kaminsky accepts the Führer's offer and swears his allegiance to the Reich in spirit of cooperation between Russians and Germans for the glory of the Reich. Bronislav can't stop 
uh, but a, have a slight chuckle from escaping his otherwise solemn expression. He finds it highly amusing how collaborators always use such olic and magniloquent expressions when in truth they are shamelessly begging for help. Still, he can't deny Kaminsky's usefulness. Securing a loyal hub in the middle of Muscovy will be extremely useful for the coming struggle, so perhaps a polite answer is in order with a side of dictates to reply to the secretary to the loyal Bronislav Kaminsky. Hmm. Einheit's back. Loses the Emerald Isle. The word has reached us via the diplomatic office today, announcing that Ireland has decided to strike out on its own. The message from Taosha Lemas was polite and placating, apologizing for the sudden departure from our alliance and thanking us for the use of it for national friendship. It's obviously just a, an apologetic attempt to avoid Vemak boots on our soil, but it's quite obvious that they had little choice in the matter. The Terra Simos Tuomi, of the communist-leaning paramilitary organization Sao Era, outmaneuvered the Irish army, which had been tutored by our own Vemak for decades, to forcefully occupy the northern counties that had previously been a slice of the UK. Tuomi's demand of a complete annulment of all ties to our Reich, else it would be a civil war for the fate of the nation. It seems that the Spinus Fianna Fáil party were unwilling to fight for the place in the world and now have caved into the treacherous Bolsheviks' demands. And th to think, people always say we're crazy when we say Bolsheviks are sabotaging us. Alright, anything over here? No, yep, yeah, cool. Actually, do anything for the big Reichskommissariat. Well, that is beautiful, but I don't like Zanzu Zanu Zimbabwe? What? Let's go and do this. And now we lost some more loyalty, which is not good. But, yeah. Hey, you know what? Even though the hair was in opposition last time, they're, they're doing a little better right now. They're doing a little better. As, and as some of you guys said, focus more on just getting more and more reform support. Who cares about the other stuff? Slave plantations, we need some more reform. So we're going to do that one first. This way, this will become more and more reformist. And then after that, we'll, we'll do a lot more. Actually, can we dismantle anybody? 40% support. 85%. How do we dismantle stuff? Interactions, slave plantations. I would like to dismantle the militarists. Alright, give them some more uh, reform. They're more than conservatives now, that's good. 85%. And reformers have 47.5% of all power. Which is a good thing. Log of land of fog. Okay, so they're 10. It doesn't really matter, so... Let's go ahead and go with somewhere that's two. Ah, get rid of the guns, whatever. I don't really care. Mobilize the hail. And restore order. Our glorious leader, Hitler, envisioned a Lebensraum only for Aryans. Such a beautiful, a bountiful land was to be found in Russia, controlled by the Bolsheviks. In the greatest war known to mankind, he shattered the hammer and sickle and planted the eagle and swastika in their place. Now we are ready to return to these lands as conquerors just like 20 years ago. Just like its predecessor, Fear Bowman shall triumph upon the degenerates who dare to deny the German the right to rule. Let the world know that the Reich suffers no interlopers on its road to eternal glory, onwards to victory. Smolensk, uh, and a lot of other places. We get Volgashat and Muscovy as well. Penza, Oriol. Smolensk, Oriol, Voronze, Penza. Cool. I'm going to have you guys be, like... Fight the front of this. That'd be fine. You guys come over there. We should do relatively okay. Maybe not perfectly, especially with these guys down here. But we'll see. Is there anyone else we can throw our guys at? Volgashat will be our allies, so... Uh, you guys come up there. Oh, oh, or just kind of hang out. Yeah, just kind of hang out for now. That'd be alright. So, Oda. Very good. Oh, can we begin reconstruction? The German rules endures. Muscovine is back under control. Yeah, we'll probably do that eventually. The Sour Era steps down. Oh boy. And, uh, man, the West Russian Revolution in front, we definitely gotta kill them off. Oh, Nega's not having a good time either. A little bit of lag. And also, that's one of the comments from yesterday. Why do I keep it on autosaving? Or, you know, autosaves and stuff like that. That's because if I make a mistake, I can always go back to the autosave, which is very, 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 very useful. So that's why I do that. Oh, do we call in everybody? That's yeah, fine. There we go. Not too bad, yeah. Um, calling you guys was probably a smart idea. Alright, so how many have we killed off? A few thousand. We've lost 55 guys. Too much German blood has been spilled for these degenerates. But oh well. There goes military austerity. Hey, hey, we, we tied again. 3 1 tie. Good. Anything down here? Nope. Fine with me. Because now, slash, spend more. Because even though the GDP is going down, it doesn't matter to me. We gotta do that. You guys, more loyalty. Good. 28%, not bad. Not bad at all. Especially when we can't do a focus. So we get even more political power. I love it. Ah, oh, beautiful. 
let the tanks, the panzers, roll right in. Um, Klaus von Stauffenberg, very good. So good. Uh, now that is a guy that tried to assassinate Mr. Hitler, if I remember correctly, in our timeline, 1944, Operation Valkyrie. Obviously, it didn't go very well for him. Oh, the land of fog. Caucasus is odd. Even before the late Hitler's unfortunate demise, little news, but lots of oils came from there. Now the Bowman's from hand, it is time to change us. Let's see what is actually happening in the Caucasus. And fjords in the north. Ah, oh, very good. Shock and awe. We are now done with my, with my, my land auction. Our land auction. Very nice. Even more salt to take, yes, please. So good. Ah. The military Regierung Muscovine. Sehr gut, sehr gut. Muy bueno. Begin the reconstruction. Now that Muscovine has been secured once more, it's time for the reconstruction to begin. The economy and infrastructure of the Reichskommissar have suffered greatly from the chaos that followed the Bugger Krieg. Kasha's disappearance and the subsequent restoration of the order as well. Now that peace is returned, we need to repair the damage. To this end, a reconstruction committee shall oversee the arrival, organization, and distribution of all supplies and investments coming from Germania. In addition to the economists and administrators, the committee will be joined by a strong security complement in order to ensure that peace is maintained against all those who would try to endanger it again. Very, very good. Sounds like we might need to go to, um, Caucasus then. Oh, Josias, if you like to read about this, he's a very, very weird guy, so. You're already ahead if you like to. Anything else around here? Do we got a 10? Oh, oh, empty. Good. It's fine. Land of Fog. Most good. And they actually got up to 12. What is the AI doing? Italy. Why are you being so incompetent? Well, it's Italy, I guess. Oh, wait, look at this. Dismantle? Wait, hold on. If I click this, who do I dismantle? Militarists? Conservatives? Our well, if this goes poorly for us, we can probably dismantle whoever. Give me one more day, I want... There we go. Alright, there we go. Ah, the scent of conspiracy. Failed Marshal Bowman said with a grimace, massaging his aching belly. He stood up from his desk and lumped forward. Thank you for arriving at such notice. You seem concerned, my fiel, Spada responded, shaking his hand with a polite smile. Are you well? It's just an upset stomach, Bowman groaned. Failed Marshal, you must listen. We are allies, you and I. Together, we shall reform the Wehrmacht and drag it to greatness. I am beginning to believe that Ferdinand and his military scum are planning a coup against me, against you, and against the entire government. He limped back to his desk. My fiel, Spada began hesitantly, bemused, meant etched onto his face. Where has he gone, Bowman exclaimed, leaning against his desk with a deep exaltation. He's plotting something, Hans. Scheming in the shadows, waiting for the right opportunity to strike, there is no doubt in my mind. Fear the scorn, man. Ah, oh, very good. And we'll still keep doing some of this stuff. Actually, you know what? We have enough political power. We might as well implicate our political enemies. Nah, we good. And there's nothing we can do about this yet, because we're not done quite yet. We have to dismantle the militarists first. How do we get this? More factories? Do we make more factories? What do what do we need? Anti ooh, empty air. I don't ever like getting that far into research for anti air, just because it it's another add on you need to make sure that your soldiers can perform well enough. Which I, I never really liked that much, but whatever. Good. That should keep us placated for a while. And empty chia, Spada folded his arms and sighed heavily. His patience was wearing thin. The OKW officers around the table were equally frustrated, whether he was healthy or sick, energetic or exhausted, heavily preoccupied or free of time. Since his appointment of the chief of the OKW, Spada was never late to a meeting. Bill Marshal Shona was different, uh, a different case, of course. He would often swagger in ten minutes late, making a grand entrance with his trademark sneer. The man had always been a spiteful little snake, but since the fear of rejection, his venom had only grown more poisonous. Despite everything, Shona was still loyal to the Reich. Oh, wait, oops, oh my, but my gosh. My apologies about that. You know what? My apologies. My apologies about that, but this is exactly why I auto-save, in case I make mistakes. It's now back our first, but empty chair, of course. Uh, despite everything, Shona was still loyal to the Reich. Spado valued his advice as an experienced officer, if only for polite rather than practical purposes. Yet a whole hour had passed, and there was no sign of the man, nor had 
he made any phone calls to the OKW headquarters, not since the riots had begun. Field Marshal Young Soldat spoke as he entered the meeting room, snapped to attention. We have attempted to contact Field Marshal Shona and his men to no avail. Shvatos slumped down in his chair with an ashen face. If your suspicions were true, there could be no denying it. Ferdinand Shona was plotting something. It is time to act. Wow, look at that. Look at the reserves. Wow. Okay, now it's zero. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Cool. Anything around here? Nah. As you can see, I literally just reloaded the save. The Land of Fog. Uh, are the soldiers down here? Yes, they are. It's time to do what we must do. Italy, why did you... Ooh, the Mad Prince. Ooh, what's this? Ah, yes. If you'd like to read about the Mad Prince, go right ahead. Reestablish logistic chains. Off with its head. It is time to ready the men. The mad tyrant of the mountains need to be removed, and the hail stands by eagerly, ready for the coup de grace. The invasion will be simple enough. Calcasa does not have the military strength to stand up to the combined might of the German armed forces. We will blitz through the plains of their city, secure the oil refineries, and bomb anything in the mountains that resist us. And for Josias, death. Befitting for traitor, mercy for madman. Followed with, eliminate his supports. Well, we shall see what happens very soon. Off with the said. Still heavy. A stroll through HQ. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Bulgaria, if you'd like to join the, our conflict, that is more than good for us. <clears throat> Lord Marshal, Hans Spado paced through the corridors of the OKW headquarters, muttering to him soft as his brain ran through scenarios and formed links. The secretaries, administrators, and officers stepped out of his way with a respectful nod they were used to his behavior. The chief of the OKW could barely sit for ten minutes without wanting to shoot his, to his feet and stroll around the building and thought. Moments before, he had ordered agents of the Fremde Herr Ost to hunt for Sch Shona's location. The man had always been a spiteful little snake, but since the field's rejection, his venom had only grown more poisonous. With each passing hour, its absence became more and more terrifying. Bowman had shown the evidence. Money laundering, market manipulation. The man was insane. There could be no question, but what was he planning in the twisted mind of his? I will swing if I don't find this traitor. Very good. Very? Very good. Very good. Very good. Ah, uh, the land of, well... Josias is a very weird one. It's very interesting to see what the devs can come up with all the different like images of the swastika and the flags for each nation. But, mind you, England is rebuilding the armed forces. As such, they wish to purchase several thousand surplus weapons from our reserves. They use these weapons up at their forces. We can either allow the sale to go through or refuse to make a deal. Well, pack influence will increase by massive amounts. Are liquid reserves will increase? Absolutely. We would like them to join the Einheits Pact with us, which I kind of doubt they will actually. But you never know. They look warmly like us. 50 million? Cut down the debt. Actually, probably increase the GDP, but whatever. Ah, very good. The Commissariat is back under Akkad Faha von Goblins. Lockdown. There's no time to lose. Bauman snapped as his grip on the phone titan. We must prepare for all potential outcomes. Field Marshal Spadol, I want you to organize with Heinrich Müller and the Ortbo. The Reich is going into total lockdown. That's an order. His nervous fingers strum the desk. Until that snake and its ilk are found, I want the borders fully closed. Werner Naumann and the RMVP will be will deal with the public. The borders are closing for security-related purposes or something similar. Do you understand me? Yes, mein Führer. Yes, that attempted assassination. Ah, Muscovine is so beautiful. Uh, Vank is a, doing a great job, my friends. A truly great job. Eliminate his support. Like any madman, Josiah's had a chain of yes-men at his beck and call, vying for approval and favor from their mad tyrant. Madness is like a disease. It spreads, even among Aryan stock. This is more apparent than when looking at what's left of the government apparatus. Calling whatever bureaucracy still left of government is very generous. We have no choice. We need to purge Calcasia of any of all of Josiah's men still left. At all levels of both the administration and army, then replaced with just our own loyalists. Calcasia is too hard or too important to leave in the mad, mad trader's hands. Very good. And then reestablish logistic change. Calcasia. Caucasia. If secured and has been reintegrated into the pack, the administration has been dealt with and the industry has been secured and repaired, including all important oil refineries which are churning out barrels of oil for the Reich again. This is truly a momentum, momentous turn of events for the Reich. We've secured the oil of Caucasia and are now we are able to restart the shipments of fuel and oil to the Fatherland, Siegheil. Ooh, more growth, new source of income, good. Romania says to Germany, we've gained another important ally as we should. Is Onega winning? Oh, that'd be so cool if they could actually win against the WRRF. Ooh. Turn 5? Oh, we're pretty good right now. Fjord to the north. A thousand year Reich forevermore. Wait, the Fjords? What is this one? 
of the attempted assassination and the laser heat of the afternoon and assassination temples foiled in the village of Ansbach. Due to FHO forewarning, the noted reformist officer Alexis von Ruhner counseled a planned meeting with six of his subordinates at the Anna Ansnach, Ansbach garrison. Orpal units and bomb defeats with specialists were called to disarm the explosive device, which proved to be a successful operation. The failed bombing was clearly a botched political assassination by Ferdinand Schroeder's military's coup for clique. Chief of the OKW Hans Spiro has urged caution while the Fuhrer has sworn vengeance towards the perpetrator of the crime. Schroeder will answer for this. Oh boy. Yes, he will. And once we're done with this... Secure our holdings. We have returned proper Nazi control to Caucasia. We should not grow complacent. We need to learn from the lessons of the past to prevent future disasters and the loss of our all-so-important oil fields. We have control, so now we should fortify major areas of importance throughout the country. The major urban centers, refineries, and ports should all be fortified in the event of a native uprising, and administrators who are loyal to us and to us only should be sent to the region to supervise and ensure the loyalty of the bureaucratic so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the last decade. The last thing we need is another madman taking control or another oligarchic coup. Good. Visions of a civil war. The Reichskanzlei was in total lockdown, ordering uh, Polizei troops were patrolling every quarter, guarding every room, gathering outside every entrance, armed with heavy weaponry. It was a very early morning hours, but Bormann still worked in a smoke-filled office, signing paperwork and barking orders down the phone. He was communicating with the administrations of those loyal Reichskommissariats, just desperate to aid them in any way possible to uncover Shona's whereabouts. The OKW headquarters was in total lockdown. Hail troops were patrolling every corridor, guarding every room, gathering outside every entrance, armed with heavy weaponry. It was the early hours of the morning, but Spado paced through the corridors in deep thought, hands clutched behind his back. He had communicated with several intelligence contacts in the east, hearing their detailed reports and determining which leads to follow and which to ignore. The fear and the Rex Marshal finally retired for bed, though. Sleep evaded them. While shown this plot to unfold, the nation would suffer a second Belga Krieg. The two major eruptions of intersine inter violence in such a short time span would spell the end of the wreck itself, the potential rise of the bloody foot and end as fear of its ashes. Time. It all comes down to time. Good. Even more loyalty. The performance are doing great. Lots and lots of loyalty. My apologies for that. I want to see if my cat was meowing outside of my room, which he was for a little bit. So, uh, one of the comments from yesterday was that a lot, a lot of people recommended we should have done the academic research base. So, it's not going down, but we should have chosen that one because that would have helped us out for a month, the uh, experience, and obviously our industrial expertise is going down. So, it is what it is. Maybe next time when we play Borman, I will increase the academic base or academic standing of our nation. But a breakthrough. The phone's shrill rang pierced Borman's ears. He darted from the window and grabbed it without a moment's hesitation. Hi, Borman, came Shibata's voice. It sounded exhausted, yes, but somewhat different, somewhat hopeful. Bowman ran a hand over his scalp and held his breath. I've received a breakthrough report from my FHO agent. Shona has been sighted in Oslin. In Oslin? Bowman was frozen like a statue. He's been traced to the city of Riga. The reports are highly credible, mind fear. Bowman viciously punched the air in silent celebration. He may have underestimated Shona, but so did Shona underestimate the fear's cunning. That was if the reports were true, of course. Bowman sunk into his chair. What if the a FHO agents were loyal to the militarists? What if the whole thing was a trap? The corridors of the power were brimming with ingenuity, tenacity, and ruthlessness. There was no room for trust. A decision must be made. The execute button will become available once we reach 75% control. The assassination of Ferdinand Shona. Having further analyzed the situation, spoke Spado's tired voice, I believe that we must act with caution. Launching an assault on Shona's location with our Wehrmacht troops is too risky, and not particularly necessary. I agree, Bowman responded, we should smother the infant in its crib. Instruct your FHO agents to assassinate the Reichsmarschall. Without Shona leading the charges, insidious cabal should soon collapse. Exactly what I was going to suggest, my Fira, Spado responded eagerly. The snake had failed to slither out from under Bowman's boot. It was time to pick up the creature, grab it by its scaly head, and twist. Execute. <clears throat> and the lifeline of the Reich. The black lifeblood of the Reich is bumping again from the refiners of Caucasia. The oil shipments have resumed with little issue, and Germany is once again oil self-sufficient. The operations in Caucas and the Caucasus have been a major success. We have restored order in good fashion. Oil is once again flowing, and our administration has transitioned smoothly, now working for us and us alone. We should not dwell on the Reich regaining its oil fields, however. Before, we have also won a huge strategic victory throughout the ac actions. The Reich has again... Land access to the Middle East. Should we need to intervene there? All in all, this is a glorious day for the Reich. Our GDP growth will increase a little bit. Hopefully we get to 0%. Or maybe above that, but really 0% would be okay. The fjords in the north, huh? The fjords. 
The Danes and Norwegians, a perfect example of pure German Aryanism, broke free of Germania's control at the outbreak of the Burger Krieg. Given the strategic components to the Reich, the GGR has no choice but to attempt to reclaim these nations or these lost territories. This shouldn't be an issue though, the Nordics are pushovers. Troops on the border. As FHO agents seek to determine Shona's precise location in Riga and plot his assassination, multiple Wehrmacht units have been cover covertly moved to the border of Austin upon insistence of the Führer. Every possible outcome must be prepared for in the event of any assassination attempt failing. The situation could turn sour and lead to an attempted invasion of the Reich's borders. Any such invasion would be crushed by the glorious Wehrmacht loyalists, of course, but Bormann has a man who took no chances. Expect the best, plan for the worst. What am I? I say the same thing usually. I hope for the best. I really do. And then, you know... Assume the worst. Am I a Borman? I don't know. I'm not. I'm definitely not balding. I'll put it like that. Uh, LCS. Yes. Slave plantations. Heat integration. Tanks. Ah. Uh, yes, yes. More main battle tank improvements. Lifeline of the like. Is that it for now? So yeah. I mean, this would have been really good for us. But I would have loved to have academic base improved. But that population and army professionalism... Yeah, FHO report. Oberkommando des Heeres. From the Heer Ost to the Führer top secret information regarding Unternehmen Schlange. FHO agents have determined the exact location of Reichsmarschall Ferdinand Schoner. Our investigations have traced him to the, the Hermann von Selza Hospital in Riga. The target is being treated for an unidentified stomach disease, infiltration, and an elimination of the target poses severe issues. As detailed on page 2 of the attached document, we await our orders. Harry Bowman, kill him. Kill him. End his life now. Was it Tot... Tolten in Phone and friend. Bowman paced around his office. Schoener was missing, the economy was failing, and conspiracy abounded. And he had an awful stomachache. He lit himself another cigarette as he considered what to do. There were few men worthy of his trust. Perhaps it was not trust he needed. Few liked Schoener. He was a deeply unpleasant man. One man, above all others, however, had acted against him in the abortive coup in the 50s. A man trusted by the whole Reich, if not Bowman himself. He waddled to his desk, grimacing and rubbing his belly. He picked up this phone. Bring about my car. Ooh, conservatives good. go down. That's not good. What's wrong with your belly? Does he have cancer? I hope he doesn't have cancer. Daddy Fuhr Bowman cannot have any such weakness disease. Good. More technology? Ah, uh, technology for the Reich. Half-Life. Never played it. Uh, Shona wrapped his slender, shaking fingers around the mug of morning tea and raised it to his pale lips as usual. It was too sweet. The small action had already drained him of his energy, which had seeped through over from his body over the last week. At first, he ranted at the doctors in fury. Why had his grown, grown paler? Why were his hands shaking? Why was his hair falling out? The screams had devolved into little more than raspy whimpers in a matter of days. The doctors insisted on their ignorance and confusion. The stomach operation had gone perfectly. He would be fit to walk in a matter of days. He had no explanations for the vomiting or the di diarrhea or the bleeding gums. On his orders, they had stopped giving him morphine as soon as the first clump of hair had fallen into his evening soup. With a painted moan, Shona stretched his little stick thin arm out to place the mug back down, as if from his grasp at the last moment and shattered onto the floor, spilling hot tea everywhere. He was tired, so very tired. A short rest was all he needed, then he could go back to work. Just one more nap. The doctors found him an hour later. Respiratory deficiency was written on the uh, certificate. The powder just worked fine. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, at first I thought that was Borman. Like, reading that, I'm like, his stomach hurts, right? And, you know, but, you know what? Sometimes, we can't trust the doctors? I don't know. Yes. Yes. 36%. And the death of the military's plot. Oh, what's happening to the Boer Republic? What's going on? The death of Ferdinand Schoener caused immense disarray among his military's followers. Many units turned against their former allies. Others have fled, fled for the east. Well, they, should, they should go to the Aryan Brotherhood, but they're dead now. The few that remained quickly descended into intersign and skirmishes and power struggles. By the time Alta Ernst Rehme had rallied the remaining men to his side, the Wehrmacht troops were sweeping through Riga and mopped up what was left. Rehme held, held Shona as he faced the execution squad. Upon hearing news of Shona's most tragic death and the destruction of his forces later that morning, Borna invited Hans Spider and Baldur von Schirach for a celebratory meal of steak and wine. The chief of the OKW was satisfied after two glasses, and the chief of the party chancellery after two bottles. Bowman had allowed himself some rare indulgence as he sipped his wine content Contently, picturing Shona wasting away as a polonium worked its magic. The military's plot was spoiled, its leaders were dead. Spider had been foolish enough to believe Bowman's promise of fully ascending to the reformist demands had he not learned his place. No one can be trusted. And the, the right to 
the thousand year wreck forever more. Uh, I've already read this one, but we'll read it again because we can. We've successfully succeeded in surviving the aftermath of the Burger Creek. The gross German has had to achieve relative political stability for the first time in decades. As a result, a powerful wave of optimism has swept across the Reich. The German people, hopeful of a good future, believing that this is the commencement of a new glorious era for their national socialism. A golden age under Fuhrer Baumann, uh, but only time will tell, of course. Given recent events, it's safe to assume that the Thousand Year Reich will remain forevermore. The second South African Civil War. Oh boy, yet another war in Africa? Holy bad words. Alright, is it volunteer time? Magnus Milan, what did you do? Um, Connie? The Zulu Zosa Alliance. Do they? They don't have focus trees. Do you guys have focus trees? No? Well, Union of South Africa is backed. Oh my goodness. Um, and who's down here? Lesotho, huh. You know, nothing we can really do about that. Unfortunate. Uh, this seems, keeps going down. Oh, and Mbabane. Oh, look at that. It looks kind of like a slave. I don't know. Can I say that? I don't know. Oh, Opa Kamana Sud Africa. Hello. What is this? Karl Chimilskiu, skewy, 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 skew. Ah, uh, this is popped out from oh, gross Africa. Uh, actually, can we see his ministers? I like we can see this stuff. It's a side of development. No, we can't, which sucks, but that's okay. All right, what's next? Ah, new focus tree. Awesome, 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 awesome. Sweet. The Oregs, or the Dregs. With the aid of our so-called allies, the traitors who dared oppose us have been crushed without mercy. Yet this is no time for rest or indulgence, as long as his enemies fester within German institutions. Bomba will never be safe from usurpation. Sympathizers of our allies and remnants of the crushed traitors lurk within the Wehrmacht and the mega corporations. Both the reformists and the militaries are our enemies, and neither should be given the popularity to get more influence in the party. Actually, what? our GDP is... Wow, that growth did not help us that, that much. But hey, the budget's looking extremely much better. Like, we were like 5 billion for deficit. Now we're like 3.6. Not bad. Ah, morning schemes. Bowman rubbed his eyes once more and glanced through his office window. The sun was rising upon Germania as the Fuhrer stopped pacing around and sat back in his chair. Though he tried, he could not recall when he had last left the office before sunrise, perhaps before the attempted coup. Not that it mattered much, of course. Sleep never came easy to the Fuhrer until he dealt with all of his work, and even then, Bowman did not take pleasure in his slumber. Bah, bloody waste of time, he thought. He'd remain sleepless for some more. The Reich had almost met its downfall thanks to his rival scheming, and Bormann could not allow it to happen again. While his associates had been diligent in their purges, more work remained, and the Fuhrer could not allow himself any naivety. He and his allies sat in the same table, and laughed at the same jokes for now, but they would pounce at any sign of weakness. Martin Bowman had the beginnings of a plan, though. A few hours later, Bowman called Heinrich Müller and scheduled a meeting. These loose ends might sink the Reich. And actually, this focus tree reminds me of, like, the regional stage, or maybe even the super regional stage of a Russian warlord, so... Because of the way it's split up, so... Uh, Spado's Merry Band. One, our one true ally. The fat industrialist. I don't want to lower... Well, I get some more loyalty. I kind of like that. Market manipulation will net us $25 million. That's not much. Ooh, secret service with data cohesion? Ooh, that's more cost, though. I don't like that. Is there any... Ooh, less reformer support. I don't like that. Always watching, ever ready. Man, we're going... We're going to go nuts, aren't we? I... <laughs> Wait, hold on. I am the like. Spado's Mary Band carried in one hand. Rifle in the other. Ooh, uh... Spado's Mary Band. That idiot Spado and his band of morons are celebrating the fact that Shona's has been done away with. They see this as an opportunity to shape the right to the degenerate vision and take control of the hell itself. They greatly underestimate Fear Bowman. With militaries gone, these idiots have removed the only reason that we even cooperated with them in the first place. It's time to clamp down on the reformists and show the dudes who's boss. Bowman is for Fear now, and it's his Reich. He gets to decide what goes on. Pimp my Reich. Let's see what happens. The Reich's Northern Fortress. Oh, look at this. It's over here. If you like to read about this, go right ahead. Ah, it's about Norway. 
Okay, meeting with Lunda. How about that? The chaos of the Burger Creek did not only wreak havoc in Germany, across the world, our government shook and fell to pieces, overwhelmed by a number of bar bearing issues. Norway is no exception to this, though our exit was much more peaceful than in other places in Norway. Terboven recognized the hopelessness of his situation and decided to preempt the inevitable uprising by sending his men home, abandoning the northern fortresses to the native inhabitants. A power struggle ensued between the NS, the civilian party we had entrusted to run the nation for so long, and the, as the wings of the party split from each other in an attempt to, to take control of Norway. Norway for themselves. In the end, the mainstream wing of the NS, led by Goldbrand Lund, has maintained their control over the nation. While this may not be our best case scenario, it is certainly not the worst that could have happened. We have worked with Lunda before, and our goals line up with most areas, of course. Lunda has had his complaints about how the Reichskommissariat was run, and now we can enforce them at the negotiating table. We can only sit down and see what happens, and see what he wants. The Great French Game. It isn't a stretch to say that France is a shell of its former self. Ravaged and bait after the Second World War, no chance but to acquiesce acquisate to the demands of the Reich and Italian Empire. Stripped of their colonies and a vast portion of their eastern borders, they were then forced into bondage, subject to the whims of Germany. This changed with the outbreak of the German Civil War. Whether overlord and borrowed in a war, France was finally free to choose their destiny for the first time in over two decades. The celebration was short-lived, Himmler's Burgundy it quickly invaded and now occupies nearly half of the country. France is now isolated and in the market for a new ally. Although many Frenchmen are loath to rejoin the pact, the Germans are likely are the best bet if France wants its lands back. The Assis and Burgundy are as no friend of the Reich, and although they would be once again aligned with their old overlords, the dynamic would certainly be different. However, the Italians are also making a bid to win the French over. Offers of economic prosperity, protection, and ally isn't that Germanic. It's certainly tempting, though that isn't to say that the French have forgotten the Italian control large portions of the past empire. This isn't certain. It isn't certain. <coughs> Who the French will side with? But both Germany and Italy seem determined to shepherd them into their respective spheres. A new game in France is about to begin. Yet another round shall start. We got two days left for that. Not too bad. A meeting with Lunda. Keeping the hair close. With Shona destroyed, Ballman had assumed that the OKW would rather cleanly found a line. After all, Shona was the biggest threat to the stability of the Reich. The war monk who promised glory, honor, and death to the unwashed masses that made up of the Hales militarists. With his jingoistic nonsense, if he had thought the discontent in the military would be so insignificant as to be negligible, it appeared that hadn't been the case. Spidel. He seemed to have taken to the faulty narrative that had been the reformists who had won this victory for the Reich. When Ballman had received word of his boasting and posturing, he had nearly ground his teeth through the grit. He had frankly no idea how Spout had won over support by preaching such blatant cowardice, but it was something that needed to be dealt with all the same. He decided that what was needed was an appeal to the conservative faction, the silent majority that Bowman knew that made up most of the OKW. In celebrating their victory over Shona, the Fuhrer would be certain to condemn all radicals alike and express above all how Shona had pushed too far for the Reich to change. Spidel may have had a loud mouth, but he would not be able to stand up to a true challenge for the Reich's finest. Bowman would stamp out the last of the militarists, and in the process, paint Spidel as Shona's liberal mirror image. Both, however, differed they claimed to be, which would lead to collapse. Do not seek to change perfection. All right, France. Now, we've done really well. We've got Hungary, we've got Slovakia, of course, Bulgaria, Romania, and the rest of uh, Eastern Europe, for the most part. How do we get the French into us? Military restrictions, like I like to do. Wow, it's only one point. That's not bad. Four? Four. Well, command power. I don't mind spending command power. Prince of the Death? Death of the Prince. Oh, 95.6. That's pretty good. You know what? Even though Borman wants more conservative support, I still want more reformists. Hey, look, supportive. Allied, supportive. We're all very supportive here. Very good. Well, yeah, there's a lot more support for reformists, actually, now. What if I go with more and more reformists? Um, supportive, reformists. What about here? The party bureaucracy. Even more... Meeting with Lund. The chair screwed out as the German and pulled it back, gesturing for Lund to sit, which he did. The man took the other chair and sat quite quickly, looking over to Lund. Mr. Lund, hail Lund, an honor to meet with you today, truly. I understand that you have some things that you would wish to discuss before we truly get down to business of collaboration, correct? Indeed you are. I have a few topics I wish to bring up before we would be willing to rejoin the pact, after all. What's good for Norway is good for Germany, in my opinion. The diplomat laughed, of course, of course, now tell me, Lund. What is it which you wish to change? Industrialization? A defense force? Say what it is, and I'm sure we can deliver. Well, Lunda thought for a moment. I'm not sure how you'll positively react to what I say here, my friend. He smiled. Oh, come on, you never know what until you say it. The diplomat replied again, and Lunda breathed in and stealing himself. I believe that Norway should be independent of direct German rule. We've proven ourselves loyal. We've proven that we can defend ourselves. We've proven that Norway, by and large, supports the Aryan ideal. It seems only fair that we gain something in return for our steadfast support and autonomy. Real autonomy, not the fake client states that you hold over Serbia and Bulgaria, which seems like good compromise, does it not? The diplomat stared at Lunda like he had two heads. Finally, after an, an agonizing way, he stammered a reply. Perhaps this uh, copyrights could be worth it. Well, I cannot possibly do that, Mr. Luna. You know what? 
we've dealt with Ukraine, and I think that was my gift to me. Just like, I wanted to go to war with them. If we can get Norway, we'll give them a little bit of reform. And that, besides, if we give a little more reform, we can more quickly Germanize other places before Norway. So, Denmark will be Germanized, the Netherlands will be fully Germanized, even the Ukraine will be much more Germanized, and then we can go to Norway and do such like that. Oh, the Reich's Guiding Hand. Oh, it becomes a puppet. Grain and steel. Well, I should have looked at this before. That's alright, though. Loyalty has its rewards. Absolutely. When Luna requested increased autonomy for Norway, throwing off the shackles that the Reich's Commissari had imposed upon them, there was much con consternation among the ranks of the Reichstag that this could be an attempt to break away from the Reich's influence. However, it seems that the Fuhrer Bormann has made the decision to allow such a request to go through. With this decision, the Reich's Marshal, the Reich's Commissari, shall now be disbanded. In its place arises a new collaborationist regime, one that manages itself, but takes order from all the same. Perhaps with this new development, those who resist a rule in the East will see that the loyalty pays off in the end and will be more pliable when we return. Yes. Heil Zeit Zwei. And they are fascists. Oh. Goldbrand, huh? That's a name. Another episode of one of Thomas's favorite shows was on. It was all about the adventures of Fuhrer Bormann, the hero of Germany, and the constant plots by traitors to defeat the Reich. Thomas watched along wearing a Bormann t-shirt, depicting the Fuhrer wearing a Teutonic knight armor from the show. He was Thomas's hero. Now he didn't want anything so much as he wanted to be just like the Fuhrer when he grew up. The episodes weren't all about civil war anymore, although the same villains from that are still made appearances sometimes. The crimes against the Aryan race would can never be forgotten, after all. The newest episode was all about one of Borman's friends, a dopey man named Shona, and his plot to betray the father of the German nation and put the rabid dog Goring in charge of Germany. Thomas had never heard of Shona before today, but he hated him now. He was just as fat and greasy and conniving as Goring. Towards the end of the show, Thomas even watched in horror as Borman was ready to forgive Shona's betrayal, only for him to go rabid like his master and bite Sh Borman's hand. That was the last straw, and Germany's hero could no longer t take it no longer. Bormann beat Shona across the head with a super-sized fist, cramming him and goring into the same dog cell at the pound. Thomas punched into the air along with Bormann and couldn't help but snicker as the camera zoomed in on Shona's face, showing him whining like a puppy asking for a treat. Heil Zeit played after that, and Thomas sang and saluted along just like always. There was only one picture of Hitler at this time, all the rest were of Bormann. Thomas preferred it that way. Hitler was Germany's savior once, but Bormann was a new savior. He deserved the credit. Heil Hitler, Heil Bormann, repeat ad nauseum. Staring into the abyss. Uh, I love TV. And almost less than three billion. Well, for annual deficit, we're doing quite well, despite what the economy says it's doing. And actually, do we have any lesson? No, we do not. So we should continue to increase or exercise our, sh our soldiers. Carrot in one hand, rifle in the other. Uh, I kind of want to do carrot in one hand. I kind of want to do this one. Well, we certainly could just go kill the dudes. It's not exactly tasteful to do so. It would make a lot of people angry and create a lot of work that Bormann doesn't want to deal with. The best option is to focus on the reformers that are less loyal to Spado. Convincing them to be more loyal to the Fuhrer might, through pure words, threats, or even light torture would strengthen the position of the military and root out some of the degenerates currently threatening the Reich. The reformists may be suspicious of us, finding out that a large amount of influential reformists have suddenly become incredibly loyal to Bormann. They're liberals, however, and they'll probably be too stupid to notice something so blatantly obvious. Army professionalism is going up. Nice. Uh, I will continue boosting this. because The reason I keep boosting this up uh, is because it gives us more construction speed. And I want to build up the civilian factories as many as we possibly can in the nation first. Uh, which gives us the greatest amount of money that you can make. So we want to boost it up to make as much money as we can. Then slash all the construction later on. So this way we can reap the benefits of having a tremendously great GDP. Isolate our savior. Shabbat is incredibly popular in all the branches of the military. He's too popular to outright remove. If we did that, we'd see another Burger Creek. His primary base of power is within the hail. There's some other sources of power, however. Sources Spado has no influence over and can't protest if we do this some cleansing on. Nobody will care if a few more officers go missing mysteriously. If a few show up with bruises and pre start praising Fear Bormann a lot more than they used to. If a few soldiers suddenly get discharged, we may not be as powerful enough to take down Spado now, but we can at least secure a future for whatever for when we can. A lion and the eagle. Good. Oh, crap. We got 11. That sucks. I mean, it, it is what it is. Increase the strength of the cabal. Oh, I kind of want to spend more on this stuff for now. That's good. They're supportive. I want more reformers support here. There you go. Dismantled the militarists. Good. Very, very good. Next research will be done. Actually, relatively soon. Should be kind of nice. I am Hitler, huh? 
Our glorious fear of Bauman is the only fear that matters now, anyway. There's no need for the old oath to Hitler. He's dead, and he took his Reich with him. It's Bauman's Reich now, and there's no place for the dead left. We will remember him all in his glory, but it's time to move on. There will be no more oaths, or speeches, or propaganda posters, or traditions honoring Hitler and the Reich. They will honor the one Hitler named as his successor. Fear Bauman, the true fear. And we are doing air supremacy. Helicopters, I love helicopters. Tactical bombers, I don't like tactical bombers right now, so. Support weapons. It's still 1966, even though we're 44 minutes in, and that's okay. Uh, no. M Marines. Do we have Marines? I don't even know if we have Marines. Let's go with special forces. Ah, uh, isolate our savior. I am Hitler. And the eagle on the line. The Swedish nation stands neutral in a continent dominated by the Reich's influence. Yep. Yeah. This does not mean that the Reich and Sweden are power upon terms. The Swedes understand the necessity of cooperation with the Reich, and in return, the Reich is willing to bring them to the negotiation table. Should we bring the Swedes to the table, we may be able to extract some from them far more value than their, their partnership currently provides. All we must do is reach out and let the talks begin. Meeting on Göteborg. Göteborg. The well, Göteborg sat well in the water, its flag waving stiffly over Stockholm Harbor. In a way, it could be said to represent Sweden as a whole, a proud corvette not as large or powerful as the mass of carriers that swept the oceans or the battleships that stoically watched their respective harbors, but a ship that could pull its own weight and could fight the best, could fight with the best. Perhaps it was fitting that a meeting of such importance, one that could determine the economic future of Sweden, perhaps even Scandinavia, was being held there. Bowman's limousine, flanked by enough bodyguards to overthrow a small nation, pulled it up to the dock to see the Swedish foreign minister. Tolsten Nielsen, waiting for him on the ship's deck. As Bowman pulled himself from the limousine and up the gangway, Nielsen gave a short, curt nod and shook his hand, and cameras flashing to the capture of the moment. Fear of Bowman, Nielsen began. It's an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to Göteborg. Bowman nodded curtly, his face maintaining its neutrality. Nielsen continued. We were planning on taking a short cruise around the Swedish coast and then beginning in earnest. Do you wish to see your room? Bowman regarded the man with mild amusement. This was a Swedish minister. Hmm? Not intimidating, very formal, not worldly friendly. He looked it forward to seeing what he, the man was really made him, or made of. For now, however, he nodded. Yes. That would be good. Very, very good. So unfortunate we got up to 11. Russo finished. Oh, they finally... Oh! They actually signed a, a ceasefire. The cruise. Baltic wind swept across the bow of the Göteborg as she cut through the waters of Ostweed and her crew calmly walking from post to post to keeping the corvette steady. On the opposite side of the boat, in two different cabins, the delegation prepared. Fia Bowman poured over his notes, pages of economic information splayed out across his desk, occasionally shifting one way or another when the waves swept under the boats. Charts, graphs, demands, memos. It was enough to make a lesser man's head spin. Even Bowman could barely keep track of it all. He would manage, of course, always had, always would. On the other side of the boat, Nielsen prepared his demands cautiously and prepared carefully. The German eagle was prickly beast, one that did not take requests well. He would need to pick his fights well, aim for the weak spots. At the end of the day, however, Nielsen had one advantage that Bowman did not. The Germans were negotiating with Swedes, not the other way. He got to set the table and got to set the issues and valuable things in the high-level talks like these. Both parties found themselves ready to go as the clock ticked down, and when it was time, both men strode from the cabins proudly, ready for the duel of words. Economics are a dangerous game. Ah, yes, good. 90, 82%? 92%? Well, it could be better. I am Herr Hitler, huh? A new agreement. Bowman puffed on his cigarette idly as he studied his opponent, who was too busy reading through his papers to notice. The smoke waved out of the open window and into the ocean air, and Bowman found his thoughts drifting back to more interesting matters, affairs in Germany, Reichstag negotiations, military operations. The type of papers against the table snapped Bowman's attention back to Nielsen, who had prepared himself. Yeah, Bowman, I trust you understand why we're speaking here today, yes? Of course, tungsten imports, steel and iron imports, the like. Bowman grunted, mildly displeased at the sudden interruption. I trust this will be a swift process. Nielsen's brow furred. I'm afraid not, with a new geopolitical situation being so different than the one before 1963. Our government has seen fit that renegotiation is in order, namely the previous privileges granted to the Reich. We believe that it's fit to go over these. Bowman Scott, of course, you'll want, you want to cut our benefits, do you? My government sees the removal of these limits as critical in these talks. I'm sure we can find a compromise, but this will go much smoother as the Reich concedes here. Bormann's expression soured. It is what he expected, but he hoped deep down that the Swedes would be so obstinate on the issue. With the roadblock in the way right as talks began, he began to choose how was the time to make a stand. Fine, but there better be something in for us. Absolutely not. Give us the old rights. Well, the militaries are out, so fine. There better be something in for us here. I will do I am the Reich. 
There wasn't Shona's Reich, it wasn't Spado's Reich or anyone else's Reich. It was Bauman's Reich now, and we'll show for it. These liberal degenerates will feel the wrath of Bauman in full force when it is their time. They forget there is no precious here without Bauman, no Kriegsmarine without Bauman, no Luftwaffe without Bauman. It is all the creation of Bauman, and if he goes, the Reich goes with him. Those traitors in the Wehrmacht, they're all fools. Fools and degenerates, what do we do with the degenerates in the Reich? We purge them, and we've always purged them. Spado is far too popular now. More in the hair holds allegiance to a traitor rather than the true Fuhrer. In due time, these degenerates will die, they will die for opposing the Reich, opposing Bowman. And the next back a question. Bowman sighed as he read through the papers. Another issue was in his hands. At least he would get to drop this one at the feet of the Swedish minister instead of the other way around. He looked at the other man before him. Minister Nielsen, I've been informed by one of our larger companies, Reichsverka, that you may know, that the benefits they enjoyed before the Burger Creek had been revoked. Is there any particular reason for this change? Bowman questioned, tilting his head, noting how Nielsen tensed a little as he heard the question. Nielsen cleared his throat. The Reichsverka has had their benefits revoked, yes. We did so at the beginning of the Civil War. It was no longer an economic aid to us. As such, our government decided to cut a lot. Bowman scowled. Swedish dudes were more greedy than the Jews or Swiss, he thought, scarping off with the money of good German companies at the hint of first trouble. The boiling anger raged deep within him, an impulse to strike back to demand the restoration of Germans, Germany's status, but he held it in. Blowing up in the face of Swedes would do, no, do him no good. Still, however, perhaps insisting on the restoration would be a good touch, even if it did strain negotiations. No need to insist. We need to protect the Reichswerke. Hmm. Our GDP would think it's already tanking anyway, so I don't want to really hurt that. We need to protect these. Perhaps we could open up negotiations this way. We need to insist. It doesn't mean we'll go that far. But we still need to insist. Ah, 51%. The Bauman Legacy. The bedroom was swamped in absolute darkness. Bauman stumbled forwards, letting the blackness envelop him. He gave a deep yawn and placed the half-empty glass of schnapps where he thought the desk was. Something shattered. Bauman cursed with a chuckle, tore off his crumpled uniform, and crawled into bed. Not for a single night passed when he did not expect Gad to be waiting for him, eager to hear his stories from work. He could never have asked for a more loyal wife. Their thoughts had aligned on policy and ideology of life itself. He smiled to himself, Gad. Uh, she'd been so supportive of his <clears throat> sexual exploits, always encouraging him to aim higher every week. She had been a useful tool, faithful and beautiful, and delivering ten of his Aryan children into this cruel world until Mercury poisoning took her in 1946. Oh, it's terrible. Several, seven of these children were still alive. Three daughters married off to bear his grandchildren as beautiful housewives. Four sons, each educated in matters of politics and culture by the party, Academy, and Matrai Ambrunner. He had not inquired as to the fate of his eldest son, Martin Jr., who had joined the African Corps. The man was either celebrating his survival or riding in a ditch. Either way, he had served the Reich well. It's pure. He cannot risk any scandalous affairs or knowledge of any bastard children. And so he slept in a cold and empty bed every single night, undisturbed by the whispers of a woman he, or the cry of a child. The life of a simple man was not for him. He was dedicated to the Reich and the Reich alone. The slavery question. I'm sorry, Herr Nelson. I must simply insist. Bauman flashed a smile, coldly and calculating, and Nelson took a moment to think. Bauman's smile morphed from a fake diplomatic one into one of enjoyment. He would make the Swedes squirm one way or another. That was certain. Nelson's silence pervaded through the room for a near minute before he finally began his response, slow and deliberate. I'm certain we can reinstate those economic benefits, Herr Bauman, on the occasion, or the condition, I'm all ears. No slaves, none. None in Sweden. You agree to that? We have a deal. Externally, Bauman's face remained unmoved, but rage shook the iron bars of his mind. Those gosh darn Swedes, a simple agreement, and they moralize and twist it into something rotten and corrupted, all for the profits and morals. It almost made one sick, you know, certainly something that gave Bauman the impulse to leap from his chair and strangle the diplomat then and there. He scratched his neck as he thought, trying to find some way out of his own little hole. I shall meet with Gellenberg. Let us discuss other matters now. Hmm. Well, and scratching the neck as he's trying to find some. I shall meet with Geilenberg. So be it. If we must get rid of slavery, so be it. It is, as some might say, a curse upon the nation. Get accounts of Berbers killing Frenchmen, huh? Well, we want to get up to four, so... Ooh, French, bad words. Well, not, not bad words, just removal here. Oh, we don't have liquid reserves yet, so... Political power. Well, we ought to get up to four, so political power... Yeah, this one. Expose Italian brutality in Corsica. Good. And over here, conservative, we're going to go max out reformist. So reformist, reformist, reformist. The church is allied. Well, supportive, reformist, allied, allied, reformists. I want more reformists. There you go. Negotiations with Gallenberg. Are you mad? Gallenberg intonation. Oh, yeah. Cut into Bowman's ear. Like a chainsaw, and the Fuhrer sighed in frustration. It's not what I would like either, but these Swedes. They're playing hardball, you understand? Moralizing Jew dudes who won't accept anything less than it. Well... Aren't you the silver tongue? You can sort out an agreement, can't you? Gallenberg's disbelief slid slowly towards anger, and Bormann winced as he noticed the change. He looked out the window as he considered his next words. Sweden, for its faults, were certainly a beautiful country. 
A shame that the government had to be so corrupt. It would have made a fine addition to the Reich. Look, it is what it is. I'm, I'm sure you can spare a few slaves, can't you? I'm, I'm, I can't convince. You certainly can. Gallenberg's sharp voice got Bormann's speech off, and Bormann could only listen as the magnet continued. I expect this foolishness off the table. Make it happen. Bormann resisted the urge to toss his phone out of the window, or one way or another, a choice had to be made. Didn't say I warned you. You'll thank me later. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm. Wait, so which one option is this? Uh, you can spare a few slaves. You'll thank me later. Don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, you'll thank me later. Wow, we don't have any political power now, do we? Well, we're still building stuff up. We should be getting around two. Cool. Unrest in Reichsbach's factories. A spontaneous outbreak of violence in Saxony, leaving 30 dead. An explosion outside a staff break room in Bavaria, leaving 12 guards dead and another do dozen wounded. A slave mob forming in a factory in Poland, causing widespread destruction and requiring hail intervention to put down. Slave violence is no stranger to the Reich, but in a recent spike of incidents in the Reichsbach factories has caused much concern and anger at her recent actions in Sweden. Bowman's refusal to drop the compromise of leaving slavery out of Sweden, while successful in restoring benefits, has been directly correlated to the worrying trend of increased violence. This, of course, does not endear ourselves to cooperate to our corporate friends, whose anger at a refusal to concede to them has only been compounded. What should have been a great victory for our foreign ministry has turned into yet another issue to fix. In the end, however, the benefits have been restored su successfully. Perhaps one day, our success will become apparent until then, however, we will have to put our head down and march forwards. They should be thinking us the dudes. So be it. So be it. Transport issue. Every year since the 1930s, the tonnage of ore traded from Sweden to Germany has, save for the economic crash of the 50s, seen an upward trend. It is an undeniable fact that the delivery of Swedish ore into our hands is essential not only for economic reasons, but for defense reasons too. With the recent trade negotiations thus far concluded favorably, this upward trend is due to continue for decades to come. However, with the increased consolidation and organization of the German-Swedish ore trade, a question has arisen to who will be the fully responsible party for the increased transportation of ore, Germany or Sweden. Upon one hand, German firms would water the mouth to place their hands upon the government transportation contracts which would follow such an arrangement. Adversely, such contracts could prove costly to the Reich, and the corporations would surely invent a plethora of novel costs that would certainly be associated with the transportation of ore, what the costs it can only incur now that the Reich is footing their bills. Upon the other hand, it could be left to the Swedes to deliver the exports to the ore henceforth, and the German firms receiving their goods all the same, and the Swedes being left to foot the bills and handle the blame should shipping arrangements go awry. Our firms may be irked at such an agreement, but the cogs of our industry will continue to turn all the same. Um, I kind of want the Swedes to handle the transportation. Just because it saves us money, so cost to the Reich. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna let the Swedes handle it. I am the Reich, and then let's let's go hunt and hunt down Milorg. Ever since the invasion of Norway over two decades ago, the resistance has been a constant pain in our side. The most notable of these resistance groups is the Milorg, a band of degenerate Western capitalists who have spread tentacles all throughout the mountains and fjords. They've been a constant annoyance, but were assumed to be on the decline after, as the years went by until they made a sudden grab for power in the wake of Turbovin's the Apache. Though our fellow Aryans in Norway repulse a spasm, Melorg has seen a swell in both activity and numbers ever since. This cannot be allowed any longer. Using joint German-Norwegian operations, we shall embark on the greatest anti-resistance campaign Norway has ever seen. Thousands of Wehrmacht soldiers will march through the countryside, rooting out decadence wherever they see find it. No mountain will be left unchecked, no city untouched. All the routes that Melorg will set be dug up and exterminated with brutal forces. Norway must be secure before the Aryan dream can truly blossom. Very good. A matter of both. Spado was furious, no matter how hard he tried to hide it. Bowman had asked him to stand beside him for the speech, which Spado had readily agreed to. The issue was, however, that the chief of the OKW had exp expected simply a condemnation of Shorn's actions. He had even allowed himself to imagine that Bowman would be praising Spado and his men for the good work they had done in the name of the Reich. However, it seemed that the fear had other plans for his address. They had first begun discussing Shorn's treason, yes, but he had quickly taken a turn to into more unexpected political ven venues. When a soldiers pled their loyalty to the Reich and to Hitler, they attempted to place their actions on the Reich and the great fear himself. They are not able to defend themselves against madmen and as such, lunatics like Shona were able to bastardize their ideals by professing that their treason is done in the Reich's name, or to fully fulfill Hitler's vision. From now on, all soldiers are to pledge loyalty only to feel the fear. After all, the fear is the fear of successor, or Hitler's successor. And as well as the will of the Reich, all is unnecessary. Spatel's draw dropped the man in awe. The arrogance and self-absorption -absor required was, was astounding. For a moment, 
He considered walking off stage, or verbally condemning Borman, though he knew such thoughts were scandal and folly. All he could do was simply stand beside his men, making clear by his frown and furrowed brow that, brow that he did not endorse his move. He would never renounce the oath that he swore to the German people and the German nation, no matter what Borman said. But the crowd erupted into applause. It was all Spado could do was keep himself composed. The masses loved a loyal tyrant, or loved a tyrant, it seemed. Heil Bowman. After that, we shall do an attaché. With the disbanding of the Reichskommissariat, a new problem emerges. A lack of communication. It takes hours for messages from Norway to make their way through the Byzantine bureaucracy of the Reich's foreign office. And by the time a telegraph reached the Führer's desk, the choice has already been made. Such an inefficient system will only lead to future troubles, and action must be taken to preempt those issues. An attaché will be sent to Oslo in order to minimize efforts it takes for communication to commence between Germany and Oslo. We shall know what Norway plans to do almost immediately, as they decided, and a recommended course of action for the NS will be on their desk before they even leave their meetings. A new era of Norwegian-German communication will emerge faster than it was ever before, and German carriers protest. Führer Bowman, what is the meaning of this? Richard Bertram, chairman of the Nord Deutsche Lloyd, uh, said, You cannot let Sweden handle logistics. We need to share the market. Do you know how hardshipping is these days? Despite Bormann's, Bertram's complaints, Bormann remains silent. This is a disaster for us. Come on, my Fuhrer. Is Sweden worth dooming an industry? You don't understand how important Sweden is, Bormann spoke up. His voice was filled with rage. I'm a very busy person. Please leave. Bertram opened his mouth again, then realizing nothing could sway or change the Bormann's mind. Bertram left disappointed. The rest of the day was filled with similar complaints. When there was a lull in the rapid series of complaints, Bowman wondered something. Was it worth it? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Loyalty? Well, more power are the reformists, so... Even though the reformists actually are not as loyal as the conservatives, still. But that's okay for now. Havel and Bowman stepped out of the ship for what would hopefully be the last time. The Prime Minister of Sweden himself, Taga Erlander, was there. The negotiations pressed, progressed at a snail's pace, getting stuck on menial topics of debate frequently. It would all be worth it in the end. Bowman had to leave, but Havel could hopefully secure on his own. Bowman sat in his office, awaiting the news. Suddenly, Heidel bust into the room. And... It goes aboard Republic. How's, how are we looking here? Eight? Oh, there are ten. Come on, man. Seriously? Oh, Nordic brothers. Despite the, our recent actions of goodwill, it seems there's still some resentment of Germany left over from the Reichskommissariat years. Germanization has left a mark on the minds of many Norwegians, and they no longer believe in the Aryan ideal. It is time to change that with a fresh new propaganda campaign. We shall emphasize how the Nordic people are as Aryan as the Germanic folk. Separate, we are weak, but together we are unstoppable. As I say, even now, design after design is rolling off the printing press, ready to be sent over the Baltic straight to Oslo. Perhaps we can never fully recover from the damage of Germanization, but we can certainly plaster the wound over with heaps upon heaps of posters and photographs. Some Norwegians may never forget what we did to them, but we will undoubtedly convert those who are less stiffest in their hatred. Negotiations succeed. Good job! Bowman said, looking happily at the photograph of Erlander and Havel shaking hands. He honestly didn't think he could do it. Oh no, it's all in a day's work. Still, so, it's a victory for the Reich. We all reap the benefits of this. That'll show those ignorant dudes in the Reich stack how Bowman was competent. While Havel had said the deal, the majority of the work had been done by Bowman, hadn't it? Bowman would make sure the official reports said this. It was true after all. Havel was more an adversary. 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 After Havel had left office, Bowman got on the phone with the censors. I did most of that, not Havel. We got a lot more political power. Great, great, great. Now, do they join the Einheits Pact? That's the most important question. Norway has joined the Einheits Pact. The good, good soldiers. The good, good people down there. Now, we need two. We have a 66% chance of doing okay. Really, a 33% chance of what we need. As well as a 33% chance of getting what we need here, too. Who do we like more? Accounts of Berbers killing Frenchmen? Rumors of Italian ambitions. Accounts. Land. A look to the lands of lakes. Oh, yes. In the north are our old and possibly former allied Finland's grown increasingly distant as her influence collapsed in the Civil War. Let's take a look at our old diplomatic relations maybe once more. And can you do anything down here? Cabal efforts. They're 90%, so I'm already pretty good with that. All Nordic brothers. And we shall go ahead and do anything around here. Modern Luftwaffe. Nothing around there. No, it doesn't look like it. It is... Still in 1966, but the fat industrialists. Gallenberg has been removed from the position of a CEO of Reichswerke. It is a fitting fate for one who has done the ultimate injustice to the Führer. Aligning with his enemies, while the obvious benefits of removing an influential militaries are readily available, other benefits may come from having a Reichswerke totally at the whim of the Führer. This is an excellent opportunity to gain a large amount of funds. We must exploit this headless Reichswerke as much as possible and keep it out of the money-grubbing Jewish hands of the reformists. But, unless there's no other events, I guess we shall end the episode here. If you enjoyed the little video here, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will struggle for France and expand Bauman's influence. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.